So we are going to use these notes today um, that I've given you. So we need the repetition. So on Tuesday, you have learned how to do everything. Today, we want to see if you can remember how to do that because that's important for the exams. And we are going to add some level three and four questions. So just to sketch the parabola and all the graphs is routine. You will definitely get that questions in the exam. But of course, after you've sketched it or after you've got the equation, there's quite a lot of questions. Um, I think there's about 16 typical questions that the examiner can ask you. So we will then go into those questions as well today. So there's a bit of repetition. So if you can get these notes of you um, ready, we are going to give you time now to try example one on your own. To sketch this graph, right? Minus two X minus one squared plus eight, um, to sketch it. So there's some space there for your calculations. I'm going to just give you a hint what to do. And then there's space for the sketch. And after that, we are going to discuss these five questions. So if you've done with sketching and the time is not um, finished yet, try to answer some of these questions. But I'm going to give you uh, five minutes just to try and sketch, to do their calculations and sketch this on your own. And I will remind you quickly, just quickly remind you that um, this is the turning point formula. So, of course, if we have this, you can see the turning point. If there's a minus one, the turning point will be one. If there's an eight, there's an eight. And, but for the X and the Y intercepts, you must still, for X and Y intercepts, we do, for the X intercept, Y is equal to zero, and for the Y intercept, of course, X is equal to zero, and then we need to work out the turning point, which we, in this form, is the turning point, so we can see it. So I'm giving you five minutes to just try and sketch this, and then we will discuss the more difficult questions. Right, five minutes start now. Okay, right. I hope there was uh, enough time to try and sketch it quickly. So let's look at what, what, what you had to do. The first thing you can see is that you can see the turning point. So if it is minus two, X minus one plus eight, you can use those to do the turning point. So no calculations necessary. You will just say the turning point is one. If it's negative one, remember, Mr. Schutt said, what will make this zero? It was a positive one. So you change that sign. So if that's a negative one, the turning point will be at positive one. And of course, the eight as is. No changing of the eight. And then we need the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. And of course, for the x-intercept, we must make y zero. So this will be minus 2x minus 1 squared plus 8 equal to zero. And for the y-intercept, we will just go and make the x a zero. Right. And then we must just solve for x and solve for y. y-intercept, x-intercept. Now, we've got more than one option to do this. Uh, like Mr. Schutt showed you, he did it this way. Get rid of the plus 8, then divide by negative 2. So we've got x minus 1 equal to 4. And then, of course, to get rid of the square, we will say plus or minus 2. So the one answer is x minus 1 is 2, and the other one is x minus 1 is negative 2. Right. And then x will be equal to 3 or x will be equal to negative 1. So that's the two x-intercepts. And this is very easy. 0 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Multiply by minus 2 is minus 2. Plus 8 is 6. And then we can draw the graph. We start by the doing uh, the x-intercepts. The x-intercept is at 3. 
and at negative one, maybe there somewhere. And then the axis of symmetry is one, so one. One eight will be somewhere there, one eight. And then we have our graph. And what's missing is the Y intercept will be at six. Right, now this is very, I need because I'm in a hurry, but let's just look at my PowerPoint, then we have a need for Abela. So what did we say? We said, um, um, let me just listen to what Oriel is saying to me, sorry. No, okay. So we can't get a, a hold of Mr. Schutz. We just carry on. So this was the example, the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the turning point. Sorry if there's some Afrikaans in here. I did this uh, um, PowerPoint. I translated it in five minutes' time. But at um, the x-intercept, so the other, oh, I think I'm, yeah, we will write this in standard form. So the other way of doing the x-intercept is just multiply out everything, right? Get the standard form. Maybe this is how you do it. Then you factorize. And then you also get the two X intercepts is three and negative one. That's exactly what we got. Three and negative one. It doesn't matter what way you do the X intercept. Then the Y intercept, we already got the six and the turning point, we can just follow uh, the turning point formula and read it off. We don't need to do any calculation. And then we have a neat parabola for you there. Right. So I'm sure we can all sketch this graph now. Now, let's talk about the questions after that. So let's go back to our paper. Now, the first question is give the domain. Now, domain means what is the possible x values that you can put into this equation to get a y value? If you think of input and output values, you know when you did a flow diagram, the x come in, the y is the output. So what can I put into this equation? What x value can I put into this equation? Well, anything. You can put any x value in there. There's nothing that's that you can't put into x and negative one and square it. And if you look at the graph, x can be positive, right? And it's remember it's going on and on and on. So x can be four, five, six, seven, eight. It can be negative two, negative three. It, it can be zero. X can be anything. So that's really easy for a parabola. X can always be anything. So we, how do we say? We don't say X can be anything. We say X is the element of the real numbers. That's how we say that. So I'm helping with this one. Now look at the range. I'm going to make you think now. The range is what can possible output values be? Now it's really difficult to use the equation to see that. So let, let's look at the graph. The y value is increasing, increasing, and somewhere there is a maximum value, remember. And then it's decreasing again. So they, we cannot say y can be any number. It's the maximum value of y is 8. So if you have to try and write down the range, what is the possible y values? Will you say y is anything? Or will you say maybe y is greater than or smaller than and what number? Try quickly and write down the range from your graph. What is the possible values for this graph for y? Okay, I hope you see that all the y values will be smaller than eight. Is it only smaller or is it equal to? Let's see. There's eight, one eight. So it's not just smaller than eight, it's also equal to. 
And if you want to be really a good student, you will add anything, any real number that is smaller than eight. So that little sterky you can always add. But this is the main thing. Okay. That's two of the questions that you might get in the exam. Number three, possible question for the exam. For which value of X will the graph be increasing? Now you remember a straight line is either increasing or decreasing. If it's up, uphill, we will say it's increasing. If the straight line is downy, we will say it is a decreasing function. But the parabola, if you, you always walk from the left side, it will be uphill, then it's turning, maximum value downhill. So what I'm asking you is, when is this graph uphill, increasing? Now you can't say it's increasing where purple is colored in. Now see purple coloring. You must give me the X values, which possible X values will be represented on this graph. So if this is X is one, it's turning at one. What's the possible X values where this graph is increasing? Can you try and write down for which values of X will this graph be increasing? Try and write down an answer. I'll give you a minute. Do you agree all the X values on this part of the graph will be smaller than one? So that's our answer. When X is smaller than one. Now, do we add an equal? Let's see. If X is one, we are at the top of the hill. And right at the top of the hill, it's not increasing and it's not decreasing. This is uphill, then there's no gradient, and then it's downhill. So we will not include um, the one. X is smaller than one. That's where this graph is increasing. Right, now number four. Either the examiner will ask you where is it increasing or they can ask you where the graph is de decreasing. Right, decreasing means downhill. Now surely, I'm going to give you a minute to try and answer that. The downhill part is this red part now. What is the possible X values on this graph for the red part where it's down here? Surely you can try that quickly on your own. Right. Did you agree it's where X is greater than one? So smaller than one, we have uphill increasing. Greater than one, we have downhill and right at one, no gradient. Okay. The last question for this is, give the new equation if the graph is translated two units up. Now, the equation of the graph we have. That's the equation of the graph. Excuse me, Ms. Elaine. Yes. There yes. is a school saying that the, your screen is a bit unclear. Is it unclear to you? No, ma'am, no. I can see. So then probably the setting is at this side. Most probably, yes, ma'am. But, uh, Oreo, the school can just know that I'm going back to my PowerPoint every time. Right. Okay. I'm Not showing you, and then I will definitely do the same on my PowerPoint, even if okay. it takes more time. Okay. Thank so, you, if it's two units up, we will add two. So, that plus eight will just become plus ten. Right. So, what's the answers? Let's look at the PowerPoint. So this was the sketch 
Now the first question was the domain, and we said X can be an element of real numbers. The range, we said, well, it's uphill until eight, then it comes down, so Y is definitely smaller or equal to eight. Where is this graph increasing? We said X is smaller than one. Where is the graph decreasing? X is greater than one, not including one because there's no gradient at one. And then give the new equation if it's translated two units up. Well, it means Fx plus two. You must also realize that this is a way of asking the question. So either the examiner can give you this English sentence or he can just leave out that whole sentence and just ask you, what's the new equation for fx plus 2? This You must know that this means translated two units. Up. And we said we just add a 2 and it becomes a 10. That's all we do. Very easy. Five easy questions. Right, guys. Um, let's just recap. If I shift up, I add 3. Right? Doesn't matter how the equation, what the equation is, I just add three at the end. Shift down means I just take away two. So whatever the equation is, at the end I take away two. So that's the new equation. Shift up, add, shift down, minus. But we left. Now remember what Mr. Schutz said, if we shift to the left, it, it, it is, uh, we, we change something in the x value. So x is always the wrong way around. If I say left, you must add one. So it was easy to understand up and down, right? Up is adding, down is taking away. That's sort of normal. But if we do left and right, it's to the wrong way. One to the left, we will add one. Right. So we go to the equation. So that x becomes x plus one. Right. Plus one. So we, you must uh, um, memorize this. And then we just simplify. And you, you don't have to write this down. And I'm going to um, practice this now with you. I just want to show you. So no need to write it down. We are going to practice it right now. Two units to the right. Left and right is the wrong way. So right feels as if you must add, but no, you will subtract two. So you go to the equation, subtract two and simplify. Then we can also, um, so let's just practice this one. I'm giving you this equation. I'm asking you to determine the new equation of h but where's h now so that's what the examiner will do they will talk about h but you just sketch it f but h means that we are going to do a h means there's a new new equation we've we've given f f but now i'm talking about h so then you know okay new name new equation something is going to happen so what's happening here we are shifting it two up and four to the left. So quickly try that and see if you can get the new equation. Two up and four left. I give you a minute. So we're doing some theory and then we're going back to our notes and we are going to sketch again and answer these questions. But we just quickly do the theory. Two units up, four to the left.
Okay, let's see. Two units up is easy, right? We just add two at the end. Okay, four units to the left. We must go to the X and add four. Left feels like minus, but you will add. And then we are done. Plus two, plus four, and then we have the new equation. I hope you've got that now. Okay, so let's try another one. There's F. I'm talking about H now. I want H. And what is H? Two up, four left. Try that one quickly. I'll give you a minute. Two up, four left. Now remember, left influence the X and there's more than one X. No? So you must do whatever you do at both of those X's. Right, let's see. Up is easy. We just add two at the end. Four left is the wrong way around. Left feels like negative, but no, it's left and right is the wrong way around, so we will add. Add four, add four to all the x's. Right, and don't worry about multiplying it out. Now, if you can do that, I'm happy. Of course, you will simplify it then. Right, so I think we understand up and down and left and right. Okay, now let's look at reflection. Again, just listen. You don't have to write down. We will practice it. What if I reflect a point? Now, we've got three mirrors to reflect it. But let's just talk about two of them. The one mirror is the y-axis. So if I reflect that in the y-axis, I get a new point. And what will happen? This 4 becomes a negative 4. So if we reflect something in the y-axis, the x, whatever x was, become a negative x. That's it. Right. What's the other mirror? The other mirror, mirror that we can use is the x-axis. So if I reflect that in the x-axis, what will happen? The 3, y was 3, now y is negative 3, x was unchanged. So if I reflect in the x-axis, the y becomes a negative y. So y-axis change the x X axis change the Y. Right. So if I say this is FX, please reflect it for me in, let's see, in what I'm in the X axis. Can you get the new equation for me? Just take away all this. Get the new equation. I'm giving you a minute to try to get the new equation. If we reflect F in the x-axis, now it's, if the x-axis is, remember, y just became a negative y. What is y? Why is that value? So try, see if you can do that. So we move up and down, left and right, and we memorize what to do. And now we have to memorize what to do if we reflect. So what will the new equation be if we reflect F in the x-axis? Very easy. You just make the y value a negative. But we remember... We won't stop there. We always make the y a positive. It must be the subject of the formula. So what will we do with it negative? We will take it to the other side. 
So positive two becomes negative two, negative becomes positive, positive becomes negative, and that's our new equation. Right, reflection in the x-axis. Now, what if I ask you to reflect this in the y-axis? So what will happen? The x will change to negative x. So you must go to the x values and change it to negative x. Quickly try that. Easy, very easy. If you memorize the rules, it will be very easy. Reflection in the y-axis, we change the x values to negative x. But of course, we are not finished. We must simplify. So what is negative x times negative x? It's positive x. And this negative negative also becomes a positive. So that will be your final answer. Right. So let's go to example two. I'm giving you 10 minutes. To go to example two now, we need the repetition, right? So example two, there's a little pencil. You are all on your own. You must sketch this graph. It's in the turning point form. Do all your calculations, sketch the graph, and then turn to the back and answer all seven questions on your own. Right. You might have a little problem with six and seven. That's the new stuff again. So the first five will be easy. You figure out if you understand six and seven. That's what we will discuss as new information. Some old questions and some new ones. So that is 10 minutes for you to try example two all on your own. Miss Elaine, there's a question from table view high. It says, ma'am, may we please see the questions because some of us don't have the worksheet. Um, Okay, well, the question is on the board. Can't you see it? Oh, you want the other questions as well? At the back. Okay, what table I will do view, for five Table minutes. View High School, can you please specify in the chat pod which question you would like Miss Elaine van der Merwe to show? Um, what I will do, Oriel, I will show this for another two minutes. This is what I have to sketch, right? And then I will, kids must just sketch it. Then I will turn around for the question. Okay, let's leave this for another two minutes while they are sketching. And then I'll turn it around for the questions. It is not very visible in the, in, on the screen. It's not visible. Let me try, no, let me try something. How's that? It's better. But not great. But not that clear, okay, yes. Let me do this. Okay, let, I will quickly get the, the, the questions on my palm. The notes. We are at example two. Oriel, is this better? Much better, ma'am. Thank okay. you. Good. Then we use that. I'll keep this for two minutes so that everyone knows what to sketch, and then I'll go down to the questions. Okay. Right. Let's have a look. Um, listen, don't uh, feel anxious if you haven't completed something. You have this. We will send the PowerPoint with a memo for your teacher. Uh, she can share it with the whole class. You can do the whole revision again. The repetition is really good. If you want to do well in mathematics, you need repetition, even if you do the same thing over and over. Remember, Mr. Shoot said that. Okay, so let's just go to the PowerPoint for the answer. For example two, uh, let me just find it. Example two. That's what we had to do. We have to sketch that graph. We know we need the x-intercept, the y-intercept, and the turning point, of course. And I've given you 10 minutes to try, so let's have a look. Okay, so the first thing we must realize, this is the turning point formula. 
So we will be able to see the turning point immediately. But for the x-intercepts, we will make the y equal to zero. So y equal to zero. Now we can either do it the way that Mr. Schutz showed you, or let's just look at if we simplify and write it in standard form, and then we must factorize again, and then we get the two x-intercepts. So I hope you got this right. It's three and negative one. Then we need the y-intercept. For the y-intercept, x is equal to zero. So that's very easy. Zero minus one is one. Uh, if you squared it, one minus four is minus three. X-intercept, y-intercept, and the easy one is the turning point. Really easy. We just see it from there. If it's a negative one, we will write down the turning point is positive one. Negative four stays negative. So the summary, let's just look at it. We've got the y-intercept at negative three. We've got the two x-intercepts. And then we've got the turning point. And of course, a smiley face because the value of a was positive. So we will see that this graph is also increasing and decreasing, right? Um, let me just change the color. So, yeah. Right, so the first question on this graph was, did the domain, easy, very easy, don't expect that in exam too, exam too easy. X can be anything, right? We talked about that. The range, now. If we look at the y values, the y values come down, 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 down. It has a minimum of a negative four. And then the y values increase again. So we can't say y can be anything. I, I hope you got this, that there's a minimum value for y. So y will always be greater than negative four. Or, don't forget, equal to negative four. Because the turning point is at negative four. So the y, y, all the y values will always be either negative four or greater than. But range. For which values of x will this graph be increasing? Now let's think. If you walk from the left side, remember? From the left side, you will slide down and then turn and go uphill. So increasing means where's the uphill part? So I hope you got it that it's the uphill part is for x greater than 1. So when will it be decreasing? Well, it's the downhill part, and the downhill part is x is smaller than 1. It's really easy to see that. Greater than 1, you need the turning point. Smaller than 1. Now, if the examiner wants to make this very difficult, he didn't ask you to work out the turning point, and he already asked you where's the graph increasing. And that's the hint that you must know. I can only answer this question about increasing and decreasing if I know where the turning point is. And maybe you must work out the turning point on your own. And uh, it's a more complex question then. Give the new equation if this graph is translated one unit to the right. So if we say right, left and right is most not the way you think. Right is not positive, right is negative. So we have to change all the x values to x negative 1. So we can also ask it in this, this manner, either in that language, the sentence, or in this short way is the mathematical notation for move it to the right. And the answer is then, it was x minus 1, so we need to add another minus 1 to the x. So that's the final answer is then, um, sorry, that's a bit at the bottom there, but it's x minus 2 square minus 4. Right, I hope you got those five questions. Now let's look at the new question. For which values of x will fx be greater than 0? Now, guys, remember when you did inequalities, you already did where's something greater than zero, then you draw a graph, and you have already done this. So, fx means a y value. 
So I want the y value to be greater than zero. So that's positive. I want a positive y value. Now, this y value is nine, eight, seven, six. So where's the positive y values? It's on this part of the graph. It's the positive y values. Then the values become negative for y. Negative, 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 negative. And again, that part of the graph will be, have positive y values. But you can't say, listen for the examiner, the answer can't be C, yellow lines on graph. Ne? The value of X that's been asked. What value of X will the yellow part be? So what's the, tip, the X values that's on this yellow part of the graph? Well, the X coordinates will all be negative one, negative two, negative three, everything smaller than negative one. Okay, or, or, there's another part. All these x values on this part of the will be greater than three. That side of one, negative one, and that side of three. So greater than three. And that, it must be, in English, we must say, um, which is, sorry, sorry for that. I just saw the Afrikaans now. I really translated this thingy very quickly. <laughs> this must be all. Never say and. Never say and. All. Okay. So, this is quite easy because you've done inequalities. So, if I ask you for which values of x will fx be smaller than zero, it will be the red part that's left. All the negative, fx is y value, the y values must be negative. This is this part. But again, you can't say uh, C red part. You must give the values of x. So this x values will all be in between, right? In between negative one and three. And how do we write in between? We write the x in the middle and the two Inequalities must show to the left side. Right. X in the middle, two inequalities, both point left. Now, why didn't I have an equal sign here, but I do have equal sign here? What do you think is the reason for that? Now, this question has no equal sign, so you can't add the equal. This question do have an equal sign, so you must also add an equal. And this is just to be fancy, to say, listen, it's between negative one and three, and it can be any real number between negative one and three. The examiner usually only mark this spot. Okay, so I hope that is uh, covered now. So let's practice some more. Let's go to the parabola in this form, and we will do example three now. Let's just revise what we learned. For y-intercept, we still make x zero. For x-intercept, still make y zero. But we know the turning point has a formula. Minus b over 2a. And then for y, we just substitute uh, into the equation. So do you remember that? Let's try example three. Um, I'm going to my paper. Example three is now the parabola in that form. We want you to sketch that. I'm just going to put it there at the question. And then ask, answer all the questions again. So it's just a new way. Mr. Schutz explained that to you on Tuesday. Um, but I'm just going to leave my PowerPoint for a write down this. And then I'm going to leave my PowerPoint with a hints how to do that. X intercept, Y intercept, and turning point. Yeah. Let's just sum up. And then again, there is seven questions, and you will be able to answer all seven questions. Uh, let me just make a plan to give you a hint. Okay, let me just say turning point. Let me just sum up, copy this. 
into that word thingy. And then we can have everything on one screen. And I'll give you a nice 10 minutes. Uh, everything will be ready now. Just give me a minute or two. Um, sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, there we are. So to sketch it, you need to get the y-intercept, the x-intercept, and the turning point with this formula for the x value and then the y. Please try and sketch this on your own and then answer these seven questions. By now, you will have to do that to work. I'm giving you 10 minutes. It's 12 o'clock, so 10 past 12. We will have a look at this. Read the questions carefully now. Right, guys, let's have a look at the um, at the answers. Um, I'm going to my PowerPoint. So the, the question was in this form, AX squared plus BX plus C, and we must memorize this to get to the turning point. But remember, Anton gave you two more options. To do the turning point, you can also use the midpoint theorem if you have the two x-intercepts or calculus if you have done that. But for now, let's stick to minus b over 2a. Right, so x squared minus 2x minus 8. Y-intercept, easy. Now we know that that is the y-intercept, negative 8. X-intercept, well, it is in a, in a nice form already. We just have to factorize and get the two x-intercepts. And then for the turning point, we have to do some calculation. For the symmetry axis, the x part is the symmetry axis, the y part is the maximum or the minimum. So there's more than one name for each part of the turning point. Okay, so we do that calculation. We know that the a value is one, the b value is negative two, and the c value is the negative eight. So we need only the B and the A values. So X is one, that's the turning point X coordinate. And then for the Y coordinate of the turning point, we will substitute that one into the X values. So that's one and that's a one. And then we calculate it. Right, so we know the turning point is one, negative nine. So there's the turn it. Okay. So summary is we've got the y intercept at negative eight. We've got the x intercepts, two of them. Then we've got the symmetry axis at x is one. Somewhere it will turn there. Where does it turn? At one negative nine. And then we know it must be a smiley face because A is positive. And there's our graph. Now the seven questions. I hope you got these all right now. So um, let's see. If the domain by now we know it's all real numbers. Give the range, but listen carefully. The question is give the range not of fx, but of fx plus one. Now, I haven't given you the English sentence to explain what's happening to this graph. I've only used the mathematical notation. So you must understand the difference between fx 
plus one outside of the bracket and fx plus one inside of the bracket. So did this graph move either left or right or up and down? What, what's the correct thing? If we change something at the x in the bracket with the x, it moves left or right. And it's the wrong way that you think. Plus is not right, plus is to the left. So if I move this graph to the left, one unit to the left, something like this, well, the maximum and the minimum will not be influenced. And the range, therefore, will have no, there's no influence. It will be exactly the same. I will still have a minimum value of negative nine. So the range is still everything above negative nine. All these y values will be above negative nine. I hope you got that right. And if I meant up and down, the, the plus one will be on the outside. Right. Okay. So read carefully. For which values of x will the graph be increasing? Surely you know that the increasing part is now this part where we go uphill, and that is when x is greater than y. Decreasing is the downhill part, and that is where x is smaller than y. Give the new equation if the graph is reflected in the y-axis. What happens if we reflect in the y-axis? The x become negative x. So we must just change all the x's. Oh, this is not wrong, we saw. Is the question y-axis, let me just see. Um, in the y-axis, yes. So this answer on my PowerPoint is incorrect. Let's quickly fix it. On the y-axis, we must change all the x values. So let me just quickly fix this. We must change all the x values. So this x will be a negative x square. And this will become a negative x. And that will then be positive x, positive 2 and negative eight. Yeah, right. Sorry for that, five minute PowerPoint. For which values of x will, uh, if x be greater than zero, greater than zero is y values that's possible, are positive. Right, so for which values of x will that happen? If x is smaller than negative 2 or never and, you can't be smaller than negative 2 and greater than 4. No? So it's not and, it's or. I'm really sorry. I will send the correct one to your teacher. Right, ne smaller than negative two or greater than four. I hope you got that right this time. And then if it's smaller than zero means where's the y value is negative. And this is the little bucky yeah, or under the line. So it's between minus two and four. And how do we write that? The x must be in between negative two and four. Why did I add the equal sign? Because the question had the equal sign. Why didn't I add the equal sign? Because the question didn't have an equal sign. Right. Now, let's skip example four. Right. It's the same thing. Go to example five. On your notes, example five. Um... Let me just show the schools who have, doesn't have that. I'm going to example five now. Skip example four. We are going to example five. And example five is how to determine the Eva parabola. You remember you did this with Mr. Um, Mr. Schutz. Um, uh, but let's just revise quickly. Maybe you forgot. 
So example five, I'm looking for example five. Mm. So remember we said, to get the equation, you must just excuse the Afrikaans now, but to get the equation from two X intercepts given, if I give you the two X intercept, remember we start with an A and two brackets, minus root one, minus root two. So if I have a X intercept, this is the way to start, right? Remember that. So if this was a negative five, I will write plus five. And if it was a, a positive one, I will write a negative one. And then I will substitute. So example five, we're taking away the PowerPoint now. I'm going to example five, and I want you to try and get the equation of this graph with those X intercepts that was given. And then I will, you do all your calculation and answer the seven questions. I'm just going to take away this so that we can see everything at once. So there's the graph. I want the equation of the graph, and I want you to answer these two questions, only two questions. Get the equation of the graph and answer the two questions. Okay. I'll give you 10 minutes.
collega's, ons het nog 12 uur oor wanneer die sessie en dien jylle nog nie die bijwoningsregister voltooi het nie. Kan jylle asjeblieft het voltooi? Baie dankie. Five minutes left. Right, can we look at the, um, the answer? Before we look at the answer, I want to show you something that when you read a question in the exam, you can be alert um, to look out for this. The first thing I want to show you is that if you read in the diagram as fx is equal to, and you see that, okay, you can see, oh, A, B, and C, they haven't given me the equation, so probably they will ask me the equation. And then you ask yourself two questions. Number one, did they give the x-intercepts or did they give the turning point? That's all they can do. They can either give you the x-intercepts or the turning point because we have the x-intercept form or the turning point form. That's in the caps. So if you see the A, B, and C, quickly glance to the sketch to see did they give the turning point no. Did they give the x-intercepts? Yes. Then this is the way I stopped. Right. But that won't stand on your question paper. That will be gone, deleted. It won't be there. That's what you have to know. So you have to memorize a lot of stuff in mathematics. So this, in this little blocky, you have to memorize. If they give me the x-intercepts, I start with an A and two brackets. Right. Right, so let's go to the PowerPoint and see the answer. Um, so we have already showed you that, I just want to get the whole thing here. For negative five, we use a positive five. And for positive one, we use a negative one. 
And then we still need to know what the value of I, uh, A is. So that's still missing. Now, in, in all the graphs that you will do, if you need one unknown, you just need to substitute any one point. Substitute a point. You can't substitute the negative 5 or the 1. You can't use them twice. So we are looking for another point anywhere on the graph that they've given. So if they give you the x-intercepts, they must add another point. Sometimes, like Mr. should show you, they go right through 0, 0. No? Then uh, remember, that's a point. Okay, but for now, we substitute 0, 10. Don't say 10, 0. You must say 0, 10. So substitute all the x's with a 0 and all the y's with a 10. That's what we did there. And then we get a is negative 2. Then we go back to that step where we needed the a, put in the negative 2, and then simplify using grade 8 and 9 mathematics. So the final is answer is negative 2x squared minus 8x plus 10. I hope you got that. Now the questions. The first question was, where is fx greater than 0? Easy peasy, it's that part. This time, it's a little bucky at the top, so it's between negative 5 and 1. In between, all the x values in between will be on that part of the graph. So how do we answer in between with the x in between? Did I add is equal? No, so you don't need to equal. Then the next question is sort of tricky. Find the equation of the symmetry axis of negative fx. Now let's just first think what's happening here. We are looking for the equation of the symmetry axis, but it's not given. So there's some work to do. So this is a complex question because there's more than one step that you have to think of before you can answer the question. So we need to know where the turning point are. But where's the turning point? There's the symmetry axis, and we know it's in between negative 5 and 1. So let me just take out all this. Right, so then we must think between negative 5 and 1, right in the middle will the symmetry axis be. So we can use the formula x equals negative b over 2a, right? And work out the turning point, the, the x value. Or we can just say there's, there's six steps in between 1 and negative 5, six steps. So the middle will be 1, 2, 3. And there's 1, 2, 3. So where's the middle, right? We can just say 1, Two, three. We can just say minus five plus one divided by two if we use analytical geometry. That's negative four divided by two is negative two. So this must be at negative two. Let's check two, three, hopies. And from negative two to five is one, two, three, hopies. So that's correct. So now we know that the Symmetry axis for fx is negative 2. But they need the symmetry axis for negative fx. So now we must understand what, what happened if the y value becomes a negative y. Yes? yes? Um, there's a hand from JM. You are very soft. I can hardly hear you. There's a hand from JM. It's a guess. Okay, can I just complete my sentence? Then they can ask the question, okay? Okay, ma'am. Okay, so um, negative fx means we made the y value a negative y. So we have, um, we have reflected this graph in the x-axis. Now, if we reflect the graph in the x-axis, it won't have an influence on the axis of symmetry. So really that negative made no difference. So let's just take out all the stuff. 
So the answer is x is equal to negative 2. Um, so let me just write it down. So we worked it out. So x is negative 2. It's still negative 2. Um, I hit me one of these. Yes. So the correct answer is x is negative 2. So this is the way that we could have done it with x is minus b over 2i, or we can have just seen it with common sense that it's negative 2 or analytical genre. The difference will be if this negative was in the bracket, right? And I'll talk about that now. Let's just get to the question. Okay. Odile, if I can get the question. So no question was was asked, ma'am. The the or JM used the raise your hand functionality, but I noted that they post answer. So they said the answer for question one can it be together? So if you if you look at the chat board, ma'am, then you'll see there's an answer from JM. Okay, let me look at the chat box quickly. Let's see what's going on. Um, be together as my or uh, correct. You can use the and if you if you write that. Yes, you can. That will be the correct. Um, but not x greater than one. X smaller than one. So let's talk about that quickly. And um, let's say you go to a party, right? And you say. Who can come to my party? All the kids between um, 17 and 20. That's what you want to say. Between 17 and 20 can come to my party. So you can write it like this. X must be smaller. You must be smaller than 20, right? And bigger than 17. That's the way we write in between, right? Or... If you want to, you can say, if you want to come to my party, you must be smaller than 20 and, and uh, greater than 70. So you must be smaller than 20, but you mustn't be too small. I don't want the one year and the two years those kids must stay at home, please. You must be smaller by, by 20, but please also greater than 17. You won't say all. Right, you will say and. If you write something in between, you can, you can write and. But then it must make sense. L listen, if we read, yeah, X is smaller than 20. That's what we read there. And if we read that part, X must be x must be greater than, if you read from this side, x is greater than 70. So in the chat box, you just said that x is greater than 1 instead of smaller than 1. So this answer can be x is smaller than 1 and x is greater than negative 5. That's the only time you use and. But I really want to suggest that you just use this. It's much easier. You write the x in between two, two um, inequalities, and the inequality shows into to the left side. Both show to the left side. Then you write the small number here and the larger number there. It's just much easier than to think, must I write and and or? But if you are describing different, if you say you can come to my party, you must be smaller than negative five or greater than one. You see, that's an or. That's not an in-between. That's two different. You cannot say and. You cannot say you can come to my party if you are smaller than negative five and greater than one. Who is smaller than five and greater than that? There's nothing like that. So the word and can be a problem if you use it wrong. So rather write it in-between. In-between. Okay, 
I hope that answered that question. Let's just take out all the wrong answers and leave us with the correct stuff. Okay, now let's talk if I had this negative inside this bracket. If I said, I want you to, what's the symmetry axis of this? What did I say? Then I reflected, the X became, I reflected in the Y axis. Now, at the moment, the symmetry axis is a negative one. If I reflect this whole thing in the Y axis, this graph will go to the other side. And then the answer will not be negative two anymore, but positive two. Right. So be careful, you must understand the notation. Okay. Now we have 20 minutes left. So let's do. You can see we will not get to anything else but the parabola today, but I hope that we get to it really well. We're going to do example six. This is example six. It's really difficult. I'm going to say absolutely nothing. You must try and get the equation of this and then answer the questions. So I'm going to just leave this for five or so minutes that anyone can try for the equations and then we'll add the the six or seven questions. Uh, I think there's only two questions at uh, example six as well. So example six, I leave you with this for five minutes, then I will add the questions. Please try and get the equation of this parabola. Good luck. This is a really difficult one. Let's see who can get the equation of this parabola. Right, let's see. I really hope that you got this right on your own. What's the problem here? I told you if they ask you the equation, they must either give you the x-intercepts. Let's see, one x-intercept, no, be not given. Or the turning point, let's see, turning point, oh, only half of the turning point is given. So we've got a problem. I told you either the x-intercept or the turning point must be given. And you, they haven't given you anything. So what plan can we make? Why will b be 4, 0? Where did I get that? So I hope you've used your common sense and said, from this symmetry axis to the point A, it's three units, right? It's one, and then it's not in scale, but that's another two units. So three units. So that must be three units as well. So one plus three gives me four. So easy peasy to get to be, if I must just use my common sense. So whenever in mathematics something looks really difficult, you must just please go back to your common sense. Right. So B is four zero. If that is correct, then of course I have two x intercepts. So we will start with a x intercept form a and two brackets x minus root one, x minus root two. So if it's a negative two, I will write in the bracket a positive two. If it's positive four, I will write in negative four. And then I just need A. And what did we say for any graph? If you just need the A, you need to substitute a point. You can't use A again. You can't use B again. T is not available. So we must use C. So we will substitute 3, negative 5. Substitute the X with the 3, the Y with the negative 5. Get an answer and A is 1. And then we go back to step one where we needed A and we will simplify the brackets. And that is our answer. X squared minus 2X minus 8. Easy. It's just around the corner. Always remember, it's just around the corner. Now, I've asked you the following questions. 
Oh, just remember, the question was, what is A, B, and C? So answer the question at the end. The value of A is 1. The value of B is negative 2. And the value of C is negative 8. Okay. The two parts. First question is, where is fx greater than 0? Uh, let's see. It must be a y value that is positive. So it will be that part of the graph and that part, the positive y values. Again, it's smaller than negative two or, or not and greater than four. That will be the x values that is on that part of the graph. Smaller than two or, all the ands are wrong. I'm very sorry for that. Excuse or. me, ma'am. Yes. There's a question in the chat from T. I don't know who T is, but it says, okay. sorry, ma'am. How did you get the coordinate B? Okay, I'll explain again. I, I got the distance from, the, remember, this is one. It's given there. The X value, the X symmetry axis is one. So from one to negative two, is three units. So this is the symmetry axis. That means the same thing happens on the other side. From there to B will also be three units. So one plus three gives me four. I hope that's clear. So I use the, my knowledge about the symmetry axis, that the symmetry axis is right in the middle of the two X values. Right, so that's how I got that. So I hope that is clear now. And then the question is, where is it positive? That's there and there, so it will be smaller than, smaller or equal, because there's an equal, then negative two, or, or, not and, greater than four. And then a, a very easy question, what's the length of AB? The length of AB is from negative 2 to 4. What's that length? It is 6. 6 units. Right. 6 units. And guys, that was the parabola for today. The sketching, the getting the equation, and, and some questions involving um, complex questions, and increasing, decreasing, uh, if it's greater than zero, all those questions that they ask you in the exam. Now, what must you do for the last five minutes? You do nothing but listen to me for good uh, uh, advice. So let's first go to the examples. We are up to example six. Time have run out, but we will rather give more work than less. Now. So you still have got an example seven. Uh, with the questions, example eight with nice questions, example eight, that then the parabola is finished. Then we start with a hyperbola, same thing. You have learned on Tuesday uh, how to sketch and get the equation. So we are um, repeating the sketching and getting the equation, but we add the same questions. Domain, range, increasing, asymptotes, what, new equation, two units up. So it will be really easy for you to go home and do all the hyperbola questions. And then we haven't got to the exponential graph, but I'm sure one Saturday your teacher will see you again at school to revise the um, some, uh, some of this, and then you add the exponential graph. So very important, if I can just give you um, what I want to say now. Graphs, graphs in the exam. Graphs, I will write big, is 35 marks. 35 marks in the exam. That is 20 something 23% I think. No? So you need 30% to, to pass mathematics. If you can do the graphs, you've got 23% already. 
very important graphs. If you add question one, solve for x, you will pass mathematics. So the graphs is the hyper, the parabola, the hyperbola, the exponential graph. Those three graphs is 35 marks in the exam with a straight line graph. Okay, we've done this one very good now. We've done this a little bit. We haven't done this, and you know this from grade nine. So please go and revise your graphs. Take this notes that I've given you, complete it, and I will send a memo and, and, and the PowerPoint to your teacher, and you um, please complete that. Then the last thing is I also given your teacher the following. She might not have copied it yet, but let me just go to my winter school program. I have given your teacher all of this, all of this. Now I've given you a revision for functions from old exam papers, and I also added the memo. Now you can see as the revision, there's some notes, right? Lovely notes, influence of whatever happening. Nice notes, man. Lovely notes, just like Elaine can do that. Lovely notes, everything we taught you is in the notes here, right? This, if it is greater than zero, smaller, everything nicely. And then revision exercises from past exam papers. Look. But the thing with the revision exercises is you will also always have more than one graph in one sketch. So this memo is also available at your teacher. So there's nice notes, then a section A with easy questions. And if you scroll down, scroll down, you'll get to a section B with more complex questions. And I also have given your teacher the memorandum. So what I suggest is, I'm going back to what I suggest is, you work out the graphs, the examples. So you do, you complete the examples that I've worked with you today. That's the first thing. Then you ask your teacher, please, can I get the PowerPoint as a memo? And you keep that PowerPoint, you can study from that again. Then the next thing, the next weekend, you know, this is for next weekend, and this is for next, next weekend. You take that revision material that I've given you, the revision, and the first thing you look is you go through that theory again. Then next time you go to section A and try the easy exam questions. And then lastly, you go to section B and you do the difficult exam questions. If you do all of this, one Saturday, the examples, two, three, four, you need four days. I'll tell you, you will find graphs very easy. I thank you so much for the opportunity to teach you today.